of the property, you don't realize how expansive and what an amazing facility well, it what is. What is really amazing is the amount of work that's automated. Uh, the amount of stuff that's automated. Yeah. We are live. We're live. <clears throat> Call the meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. Uh, any additions to the agenda? John? Yes, I'm I'm really I apologize for this. I just received this at 1111 this morning. Uh, April 9th to 15th is 911 Dispatcher Appreciation Week, and I have an email that I'd like to speak to under new and unfinished places. That'd be number nine. Yep. Thank you. Tracy. Nope. I've just got one just briefly hydrophone. Um, I just want to add uh, to what we had a request in. Uh, for use of the tourist booth from Lisa Belair um, for the March 25th. If it wasn't uh, oh, yeah. sure for the alley cows and whiskers. Yeah. Put it on 11 or? Yeah, number yeah. 11, please. As long as there's no beaver tails. <laughs> Too soon, John. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> yeah, that part of that. <laughs> okay. Motion to accept the agenda. Okay. Anyone have any peculiar interest to declare? Seeing none. Approved minutes for the previous what is March seventh meeting? Yep, I'll approve those. All in favor? Delegations? We have none. Kevin, your goal. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I'll start out with the. Uh, the arena on this past week in March Madness, uh, nothing but positive feedback. Um, <clears throat> I have a few numbers here. Uh, the bumper cars, 240 feet plus. Uh, the kick sledding, <laughs> they lost count after 370 people using it. Some people were coming through the second time, so I just stayed there. Uh, public skating was 80, 80 people. So the ice surface was very full. That was a sponsorship, well worth it. Good timing. <laughs> <Let's get it. laughs> um, on Sunday, then we had our uh, Lisa Sharp Memorial Tournament. Uh, very well attended. Jen was there uh, for the opening ceremonies. Um, anyways, it was it was a great day. Uh, we started in the morning, went right through until I think four thirty, and then uh, we went on to public skating. So it was a great day. But since I'm on that note, um, our beaver tails uh, donations is a total of $271.16. Uh, we normally donate it to either the food bank or the clothing bank. What's council's feeling of donating to the feeding center <clears throat> for this event? Okay, uh, we'll pass it on to Nick. And, if, uh, if that's all right with all of council. Yeah. There. Thank you. And uh, it was it was very well organized. Um, the family was very pleased um, at the turnout. Um, I had an opportunity to talk to her mom and dad, and I saw Leo on the ice, and her brother and sister in law, and her sister and brother in law, and they really did appreciate the donation of the ice as well. And I understand that I will be phoned probably tomorrow about um, a, don a check presentation. Yes, so, uh, yeah. I was talking to okay. Kevin Sega, uh, President of Minor Hockey, and we're just, I said, was going to come to council today and see what, uh, and so the final check we presented to. Yeah, because he said donations were coming in that day. <laughs> there was still, still, still stuff happening that day. Yeah. So, uh, they didn't have any final numbers yet, but uh, it was a very good day. Very good day. Yeah. Uh, moving on to uh, minor hockey. Uh, playoffs are starting right now this week. So, and, and uh, the end of the month, the ice will be going out. The plant will be shut off. Figure skating is having their grand finale on March 31st, that day, that evening. So, we will shut the plant off the following Saturday. So. Um, the Eagle's Nest, the uh, breakfast, another 
Yes, I'm not sure what the numbers were there, but uh, uh, it's about 100, I think. Uh, I, they were just over 100 when I was leaving. Yeah. I have some other numbers I can add to. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what's oh, the You should, Tracy. Yeah, so just like the horse and buggy ride, we had about 200 people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's probably on the low side. Uh, we had 150 kids at the youth dance. Uh, anywhere from 60 to 75 kids for movie night, I didn't count, but it was they were lining up at six o'clock to get in for 6 30. Huge success. It was so much fun, except for the popcorn on the floor. Um, we had 105 kids for the Pokemon um, scavenger hunt. 105 families. I think it was 105 total, though, to get so many big prizes we gave out. So there could have been more. It was, it was a huge group. Though. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then the breakfast, I think it was about 100. Uh, you know, the curling night, I didn't get enough sense of the numbers, but it was jam packed. It was They had open mic. So it was full of people that night. Um, I think that's about it in terms of. Do we have an idea of the artisan market? It was full all day. All I don't have a number for that, but it was it was standing room only. Like and it was constant. get in. It's constantly going. The um, acoustics inside for the music was amazing. Like it was just hoping in the future we can do more of these things. And having you know farm to uh, fork member of Ottawa, uh, sorry Ottawa Valley Food Co up there, you know, and having. Um, uh, O'Kenny's with the sampling. It was just a really nice intimate event. And maybe we should take this opportunity. I was just going to surprise you at the end, but since you're doing it now, can we just take this opportunity to give Tracy and her group a round of applause oh, yeah. and our congratulations? I have a lot of hair. Truly. I have a few more white hairs. <laughs> and perhaps this is also a good time to put in the public that um, this was not a township paid for event, not at all. Um, that we did get a grant that we're not allowed to announce yet. But again, Tracy uh, did the grant app through the museum and uh, that is that they are the sponsor of this event. Yes, and you, I know the township we had discussed in the last meeting, you contributed a thousand, but you don't have to, I've saved you a thousand, you don't have to use that. I was able to put it through the fund. Fantastic. Because we were working with Ottawa Valley Food Co-op, thanks to Lynn, <laughs> who referred me So yeah. Well, great work all around. Yeah. I mean, that weekend was pure joy. Yeah, it was great. I think everybody needed it to get out and do something and meet, you know, get together with everyone and have some fun. And surprising that, did you know a lot of the people that were wandering around? Because there were a lot of fresh faces. Yeah, no. And um, even the bonfire, sorry, even to add to the bonfire. Yeah. We had, I had, you know, picked up a bag of uh, small stuff and that was all gone. So there's a lot of kids down there doing that. And no injuries. No injuries. That's what I noticed was lots and lots of kids. Yeah. With, with parents in tow. Definitely need, yes. more, um, need more gaming trucks next time and more uh, the bumper cars. And more, everybody more has said, cars. we need more bumper cars. Yeah. And well, go faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read Bob Belzer's comment on my Facebook? Then it looked like bumper car ballet. <laughs> the, so the four of us. Well, it was in like, slow-mo. Yeah. You just need like, it's like your lazy river and then you have your extreme lazy river. Yeah. You just need extreme, uh, extreme yeah. outside. But great for, uh, you know, ideas for next time. And I think like the gaming truck was a huge success. Yeah. I just wish we had more of them, but yeah. lesson learned for next time. Well, we said we were going to make a list when we were oh, yes. on fire, yes. right? More of. <laughs> yeah. What, what more can we add? No, more trucks, more games. More bumper cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And ones that don't spin like that. Yeah, I know. I was trying to get to Brent, and I just couldn't get there fast. I know. Yeah. You, you know what? My my kids don't talk about it. So like, and that and that's the thing. Like, I only yeah. heard nothing but positive yeah. of that whole event. Um, and uh, no, it's it's just great to see. Like, it's like when we drove to go to the Beaver Tales uh, after we're done with the bumper cars, mm -hmm. and you just see like. I don't know, it was like hundred, like a couple hundred people at the Pokemon. And like, it's just, and that's just one event, right? Yeah, like many. it was busy. Everywhere. And, so, and we said that at the library board meeting, like we really appreciate, uh, like there's the cohesiveness in our community for like the March break for the kids and adults, teenagers, everything. Yeah, um, but I would say so that's great. probably the best lesson learned from this is combining collaboration, all yeah. of the events on one calendar. So I said, the, oh no, you're not. You're on Fairfields. Sorry, I was going to put you on the spot there. Um, I'm assuming that the Echo Center must pay the leader maybe a couple of cents per um, to put that in as a as a flyer in the leader. But if we all collaborated, my goodness, everybody that bought the leader would get that once a month and be able to put it on their fridge. 
We should talk about that, talk about that in a future meeting and, and just sort of an integration. Yeah. And it might be even an app or a grant or something. There's another grant coming out through Ontario Heritage Tourism. Same thing. It's a tourism yeah. grant. Maybe there's an opportunity for an integration for a calendar if we don't have it on our site already. Right. That people feed into and the output is amalgamated calendar. So well. But I think that that was one of the biggest successes yeah. was and that people promotion. Had they, social promotion yeah but they have everything in one on one document that yeah. they can go okay we're going to go to that but we're, we'll and then that day we'll go to that and i think it just made the whole week seem exciting and and inclusive of all of our partners well how we scheduled the time frame was based on what was yeah. existing already right? right so we knew we could schedule things back to back and when and that was very good at that helping us with that timing and when people would attend events what about whiskers and alley cats just because we do have that coming up. And... Um, they had, the, it was busy. There's lots of people coming in and out. I, I think the last time I spoke to Elisa, there was two in the works for adoption. So you have to go through a process and they get vetted, you know, in terms of their suitableness mm -hmm. for adopting. But obviously she found it very successful and she's asking to use the, the tourist booth. There was nice closed space. It was nice. Yeah. I think it worked out very well. Yeah. I don't know whose idea it was to put it there, but it, Net. it that was Annette. Of course, she's she's the brains <laughs> of the operation. <laughs> of course, it was Annette. Thank you, Annette. Yeah. No, but I think I that, um, so, uh, and I agree with Brent. All I heard were good things, and you know, so, some of the some of the things that we talked about, nobody even noticed. No, they don't know right? behind the scenes, right? Drama, or the things that we said. Oh, we should have had music down by the bonfire. Yeah. Oh, we should have. Yeah. But, yeah, we could have had some live music. Weather though, it's hard to find. Yeah, it is. And we couldn't have paid for that weather. The weather was, was perfect. That was perfect. Because I mean, the next day would have been totally different. Right. And thank you, team, please. And I have all the work and you you. Know, the logistics yeah. and the moving tables and all that kind of stuff. They got to have breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> they were having they were having a recreation meeting. <laughs> and I was doing a lease signing during the breakfast, and I, I I had to do it really fast because the the two ladies wanted to go to the breakfast. So they only they're on a tight timeline because they're like, Brent, we have to make it to the breakfast. It closes at this time. I'm like, yeah, no problem. We'll get through this lease signing. No problem. <laughs> that was good. Hopefully we can do more of these things, right? Like Canada Day is probably the next one. Yep. If you're too successful, you'll become oversubscribed. I already am. I've gotten so many emails of let's do this. How about yeah. this? <laughs> I don't know. Are you gonna report on the March 12th dance? Anyway, no, I no. no. Anyways, it was a good success. It was a very soft dance. I bumped into people that I knew from Renfrew to Pembroke to some of the Hillary area. Someone said there's a hundred and one. Yes. Hundred and one people? Yes. Okay, I that's true. That's pretty much it was pretty much filled up. Yeah. Great. Thanks, and that. And that's another benefit to promoting everything at this all in one schedule, right? Because right. that's just repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. But the lessons learned, like not living in silos. Mm -hmm. Right, the library, the echo center, us, the museum, the yeah, I th yeah. <clears throat> Dave Tracy kind of touched on the uh alley cats at the uh, tourist formation booth. Uh, I popped in there in the morning, afternoon, so yes, there was uh, you know, people coming and going, beaver tails right there. So, <laughs> the did, did that? I did not. No. <laughs> we did not have a request. Well, Kevin is here if you'd like. So, we have had a request. Do it again on March 28th, is that right? 25th. 25th, this, this sorry. Saturday. This Saturday. Oh, yeah. So, um, do you have any concerns or? No, no, I don't. Uh, just, uh, Trace, are you involved with it personally or? No, I just support it from a okay. personal interest and in trying to help her, you know. Okay, just hopefully you close out of the as whoever and get it open. Um, and one other thing when will the washrooms be open? Usually we don't open the holes until May long weekend. Okay, until so Monday. is there is there any freeze in the lines, or do you just drain the lines and shut it down? We drain the lines, shut it down, winterize okay. it. Okay, yeah, it's so you don't you don't go through the whole winterization, the antifreeze. Yes, the, the oh, you do, yes, you yes. do. Okay, yes. so it more more work than just flipping a switch. Absolutely, okay, and especially with the cold. Yeah, it's not winterized, so yeah, and the uh, still yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. It was just one of the questions that was asked. Yeah, no, that's um and that and I walked through the uh final walkthrough of the curling club with the uh contractor and uh 
Harold Priestley with the uh, curling club. So there's a few little things that has to be uh, touched up in the springtime, weather permitting, get some warmer. So other than that, it uh, looks very good. So that's what we're happy to see everything completed. And that's pretty much the uh, end of my report. Uh, anything else we can talk to uh, later. The specific budget stuff. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I just have one more thing I want to add. Brent, you, are you able to let me know or get any feedback from the library maybe on what their activity was and their response to March 4th Madness? Like, oh, no, they, they had a full house. Or, yeah, so like we had a yeah. board meeting last uh, Tuesday. So like all the events actually, um, there's, a, so what actually we talked about is because a lot of the programming last week was like towards, uh, I guess you would say like the teen kids base. Yeah. Uh, but we actually had a lot of inquiries from your adult side. So it's actually a quality. Um, cooperation that we're going to reach out to and work with for the next March break with your echo center mm -hmm. um just so that our program hits both because like we had a uh, like there's a lot of our program for example yeah. at the library um that we had a lot of uh elderly people and adults calling in wanting to do it and asking if they right. can come and stuff uh so we comment the best we could and stuff but mm -hmm. uh but no there's definitely a need and a want for people to go out but no at the library was uh, very busy okay so there's lots of buzz that's good yeah so, and they're being able to doing like joint calendars again yeah well it's like, yeah it's the same thing it's a benefit on both things so like one of the missions that like we had a good talk as an organization like as a board and uh what it really i came down to is like we believe that there's only x amount of volunteers there's only x amount of things right so exactly. you can get uh generally one person so like march madness was very successful because it was put on and front front loaded from the museums and from the townships and from the libraries and from that it was just a good cohesiveness you had a lot of your other groups rotary everyone yep. legion everyone coming together but no the calendar was uh was really well received at the board yeah and tracy and i had this conversation that we're no longer working in silos you know there is the the want and i had spoken to susan the, the library about this that there is that want to work together so we're not duplicating efforts so there is something for all age groups right it's really a, it's, if you can identify the technology tool because it's not it's not beneficial for someone like Dana to manually create and pull from. No. Like we did that for March Break Madness, but that's not ideal going forward. We need some sort of technology tool that people can implement uh, their own, or sorry, input their own information and the output is a condensed calendar. Right. Absolutely. I don't know what that is at this moment. No, neither do I. <laughs> no, I, and, 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 that's, and that's what a lot of discussion was based around is uh, like March Madness is one uh, consistent title. As one consistent slogan. Yes, which is why we chose that. The library and that's the is the li in the yeah. library, and that's why we're the, they were appreciative of it continuing. It was a week long, so it just means that we'll just plan. So, like, we're looking at uh, like hour, like hours, and everything like that. So then you can have additional during that period more mm -hmm. programming. So it's like anything. There's more cohesiveness yeah. among yeah. organizations. I hate inefficiency. Got to be. I know. <laughs> so much. Right. Well, and and. Previously, people were working in their, like they were doing their own thing. So I think meshing all of our partners, our resources into one is ideal. And we do have a web on our website. The calendar has all of those mm -hmm. things. Everything's on there. Every every association sends in all of their stuff, the Echo mm -hmm. Center, the library, whatever. And then Dana has all of it for calendar on the website. Then, Maybe the output then is an actual calendar format. I don't know. I think yeah. I like a lot of people are visual. So looking at a list this way, it doesn't jive. You know what I mean? You need to see it in a... Well, it's on a calendar. Is it? Oh, okay. I thought it was just a running list. Then maybe, no, it's on the calendar. Okay, maybe it's just it's building awareness then of what you have. Yeah. Or So great, it's on the website. Let's post it to Facebook, but let's also ask Echo if they pay for it to go in the leader because yeah. they're they're just doing it on their own and there are so many more of us. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It sounds and like it's a simple That's thing. funny. Yeah. Brent, did you read Tracy's interview with the leader? Because you even said yeah. that you kept the name Merch Madness specifically because it had already been used. Yeah. Yeah. Continuity is beautiful. It's safe confusion for some yeah. people. Common events calendar might be a natural collaboration to do with NAW and uh, our, our neighbors as well. Anybody who's hosting anything in Monster Valley, it should be on a calendar in my view. So it's funny you say that because I've got a EACDG meeting coming up and I thought, I'm not going to speak for the committee, you know, because that's not my, that's not how I work, but I will bring it forward and say, this is something we want to do. So if we have events, let's, again, let's not duplicate. 
Well, yeah. we, we, took, we sat with Maria Robinson, uh, Lynn and I, and, and uh, Merv was there at the Legion for the supper. And and that and it came up with Maria, and she'd be uh, gung ho to, uh, to collaborate because she's also on the ACBG. And James Bros did come to ride the bumper cars, mm -hmm. but there at the breakfast. Too. But none of none of his council came. Mm -hmm. Are they chicken? I don't know. I don't know. It's <laughs> a <future> competition here. <laughs> they didn't know how slow they were going to be. <laughs> no neck brace required. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, oh, but you have no concerns with the tourist booth and whiskers and Alley Cat no, on Saturday. Okay. Did it Thank smell you. like uh, cats afterwards? Did you notice? That's when I was wondering if people with allergies, if there's any issues. I did. I did. Uh, yeah. I'm just yeah. curious. It was pretty cool in there. So, yeah. yeah. I didn't notice any odor either. Yeah. I was curious with people with allergies, but they wouldn't go to an event if they had allergies. They oh, wouldn't go there. yes, we did have one young lady and she oh, is allergic okay. to cats and she went in and she. She came back out. It just it was too, I mean, too many cats, right? Yeah. For somebody with allergies. So staff direction is just to have a uh, staff member open and close for Lisa. I'll work out of times with her. Yeah. I don't see why not. It's okay. sitting empty. Let's use it. Yeah. Oh, his first meeting is chief. Good afternoon, everyone. So we'll uh, jump right in. So my monthly building requires a cash, and there was no permits as of last month. Uh, this month is a little bit better, but not like last year, not even close. So it's hard to say what the year is going to be like. I think people are really rethinking what they're going to do this year. You know, it's hard to say. It really is. Or have so, and you're you're the one to ask answer this question. The people that took out building permits last year, are they all built? Uh, I'd say most of them started. That, so I'm wondering if that's why you're not seeing an influx. Like, are people just thinking about building now because, you know, supply chain, cost, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's possible. I know the, I heard the price of lumber is down to where it was. There's some oh, that's aspects, good. That's a good sign. But, and, uh, but I mean, I think the cost of uh, the contractor is still up. So people are, and the interest rates are going. So people are really thinking about what they want to do. I think what you may see is a lot more uh, renovations, additions. Yeah. You know, okay. you may not see as many new builds, but uh, time will tell. You know, yeah. it's hard to really predict from one year to the next, though. So, and uh, as part of my goals, I have the I enrolled in the Ministry of uh, Housing and Affairs Small Buildings course. So I recently completed the written exam, and I was successful. So way to go. So I don't know if I'm going to tackle any more. I'm going to give it some thought. <laughs> I mean, there's a few more I can do. There's always something to be done in the building side. So um, I know these apartment buildings come and that's probably a one-off. So, to, but if, to tackle large buildings might be something I consider, but we'll see. They're making good progress. Every day, a little bit more is being done. So your building course was specifically to do with Permitting building broad small buildings. Oh, the project. small buildings, yeah. Okay. And uh, when I started this journey back in 2015, I I tackled house first because that's all I was dealing with. But now with the apartment buildings coming, and you have to second like uh, prerequisite, you have to do one to step into the next one. It's pretty difficult to challenge a more, more significantly uh, higher exam without doing the one prior to it. So. Sure. And there's a couple to get ready for a large building. I could do building services and uh, health and safety, which is a you know something that's to look at first before I talk about large buildings. So we'll see. So with bylaw, um, so there was Jim McBain and uh, and, and I met with Jim McBain and Darla, and there was a proposal. I believe it's coming to council today. It, it's in Annette's package. Yes. I didn't want to flip back and forth because she's got all sorts of numbers and mm -hmm. yes. So, so with animal control, it's nothing to report. It's been pretty quiet on the front there. Um, parking, this is going to settle right down. That's been good. I mean, we're almost through it. A couple more days and uh, they can park on the street to their heart's content. So, and the only other item I had was action, which I was going to uh, bring cloud permitting up. Mm -hmm. but. 
because of the role I've just taken on, um, I think what I want to do is there's two components to this. There's a production component, which right now we're in a soft start. And I'm, I've been going in and I've been loading up some of the permits. And I'm going to go back to the training component uh, for now because I can issue the permits uh, faster doing it my old system mm -hmm. until I get really proficient at loading them into this system. So I'm just going to take a step back because I've got to learn firehouse software now. And I figure if I get too much going in my brain, uh, I don't want to explode. No. So. <laughs> Let's not have it explode. So. I know my limits, so so again, so I'm gonna I'm definitely still gonna do this, but it's probably gonna be later on in the year. So well, especially like your your building side will for your inspection side will yeah. increase and during the summer, spring and all that. So yeah. It makes it makes sense, stage it and then yeah. And I'm still doing a lot of inspections from the last year's permits. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I just closed down a house on Monday. Um, I'm doing a lot of finals because even now the banks are actually asking for it. So I have to and then Give them a final occupancy letter and close out the file, and then impact gets triggered. And so, so that's all I have. Uh, thank you. There's nothing on fire right yet. I'm going to be switching up my my uh, days to come in. Oh, okay. Because um, this every two months, this falls on one of my CBO meetings, so it's going to be more advantageous if I come in the first. Uh, Council session. Uh, it's when you're in for seven. fire anyway. Yes. So and I will report on building as well. Yeah. I'll just combine it. Perfect. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah the, the timeline might be a little more strict or tighter for me to get my building report done, but I'm, I'll navigate through that. So. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Carol. And we're going to get involved in, uh, in finding a contractor to replace the bylaw side of your. Former job? Yes, that's in uh, Nets. Thank you. Yeah. And I forgot to say, everybody, um, since we're we're done with Daryl and we're moving on to Annette, and we're we're actually on time. Um, in the back is Sarah Schuster, our new intern, my new intern. Uh, <laughs> she's not mine. I wish, um, but Sarah just started yesterday. Yes, uh, last week. Oh, you started last week. My sorry, and you were with us until the beginning of April. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoy. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. I've known Sarah, I think, basically your whole life. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's really exciting to see somebody, you know, somebody young and fresh that's interested in municipal politics. So welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> what a fine group. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say, Sarah? Uh, no, I'm just enjoying listening. <laughs> Good. And uh, yeah. Go ahead, John. Sarah, what's the program you're studying? Emma? It's an executive business administration program. At which you know, or which uh you have your Willis College. Willis College, yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, Daryl. Okay. So uh you all have my report in front of you. We were busy uh this month. Well, kind of the end of last month and this month. I haven't reported since February, but the auditors were in, they completed their uh, annual audit uh, for the township and even Bill Generation Corporation. They're working on putting together the financial statements and uh, Sandra's supporting them with that to come forward for approval in April or May. And they're welcome to come and present again if you'd like to need to ask uh, the Pilikins to come and do a quick presentation on the financials. I would say since this is council's first um look at this um i would say yes normally i just go over them with aaron and then i sign okay. off and then you get them in your package but i think for your first sure, one i think it would be advantageous to have a representative of mckillic can come and just do a, a do a high level i don't think she needs to go into you know every debenture etc but i think uh, for a high level okay. unless billy wants to do it <laughs> I don't, I don't think Billy's ready to. He's not ready? Okay. But I will, um, okay, that's great. So I'll let yeah. him know. And if they're ready to go by the second meeting in April, which is late uh, this year, because I think we're meeting the 11th and then the 25th. So she may have them ready by the 25th to come in and present. But uh, yeah, why are we meeting late? Uh, because there's a, and we were trying to work around. Uh, I'm, I'm I apologize. I did know that. Sorry. <laughs> well, that works better for my schedule. Oh, we were working on anyway. schedule. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice save. Perfect. Okay. So, 
And staff, of course, uh, was busy assisting with preparations uh, with March Madness, as we already discussed. And we appreciate all the support of local volunteers and council and everybody that was involved. Uh, it was a great success. And March 13th, here we have our uh, intern from Willis College, Sarah, who's going to be here for four weeks, as we just discussed. So we are excited to have her, and she's doing great. Um, our summer student job postings closed on March the 8th, so the department heads are actively interviewing, and hopefully we'll get some, some students, qualified students, coming forward. We are still working in hopes to have a SWIM program this year, because we know that since the pandemic, it's affected the number of qualified uh, instructors, and so, you know, are we going to be able to fill it? If we're not able to fill it, uh, Dana and I had a discussion with uh, the Kinsman Pool in Pembroke to look at some alternatives for our residents. So uh, because we do have money, and I know the budget isn't approved yet, but because we do have money there for the SWIM program, if we're unable to host it here at this time, because we're still waiting for people to catch up and get that done, there may be uh, ways, whether it's sponsoring non-residence fees or uh, big, you know, swim public swims, just to get people out and swimming again, or the lessons themselves that they run throughout the summer if, uh, if the non-residence fee could be waived, because it's quite... Yeah, well, what are the um, non-resident fees in Pembroke? It pretty much doubles the cost. So it's, yeah. it's $55 for swimming lessons, mm -hmm. and I think it's $45 for the non-resident fee. I think they're only 15-minute so. lessons, too. Really? Well, when I wait, I was looking at it for my kids, and that's what we were that's what we were told. Yeah. No, I think these are the summer ones are more extensive. The I think they're like they're like okay. eight weeks or six week lessons. Okay. Yeah, they're they're much more expensive. But uh, when we do that, or maybe sponsor some some public swims, mm -hmm. um, you know, that could be something as well, just to get kids out and getting used yeah. to the water too. I think public sw um, swims would be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. So. What about now? Are they hosting swimming lessons? Do they have uh, I don't challenges? Know. I, th I think Whitewater used to, and okay. they stopped. So again, I think that, that the pandemic sort of affected it's everything. Fine. So if if we can't manage our own swim program, uh, I just wanted you to be aware that we, we are still hoping to budget some money for that and at least provide something uh, for Monter Valley residents to be able to get out there and learn to swim. So. Um, Del Can hosting the community information session session regarding the development at 131 uh, Sebastopol Drive in Boymount is this Thursday at 6 p.m. So the session is being held by Zoom. Uh, it will also be available here. I'll be here in the council chambers and I'll have it live up on the, the TV for people who uh, are unable to attend by Zoom and wish to, to come into the council chambers. So that's their meeting and they're just giving out some public information about what's going on up there in case people had additional questions or just wanted to know what's going on. Well, it's been a long time. Yes. So I think that there are even new people in Flying Out mm -hmm. that may mm -hmm. have some concerns or questions and for they, them. Is that a QA and a or is it just an information session? It's an information session, but they are open to taking questions and mm -hmm. getting answers. So um, they have a quick presentation to give. Mm -hmm. uh, the site plan and the site plan conditions mm -hmm. are on the website and they have been linked to Facebook as well. Or if, or if anybody wants copies of them, you can contact me. Um, and they were on the last agenda mm -hmm. package on in February. So they're out and about as well if, if you want to read that, all that information before you come to the session. But they'll give a quick presentation of what the plans are and what's happening. And then, you know, open the floor to try and address any concerns that people have. Uh, I'll be moderating, but not as mayor. Yes, yes. So we need someone to sort of moderate who has a question, you mm -hmm. know, and make sure that one person doesn't talk for an hour so everybody gets gets a turn. And so... Too um, soon in that. Mayor's good for... Too soon in that. Sorry, my morning. sorry about that. <laughs> um, and Jason met with the Ministry of Transportation. He may report more on that when he comes back for his meeting to discuss the connecting link uh, maintenance contract because it was a, it was a one year contract, mm -hmm. and so they are willing to do it again. Uh, it will be indexed. I think it's five percent is the index, but I don't have a copy of the contract yet. Which you know, with inflation at about six, that's not uh, unreasonable. But um, yeah, so. We'll see how that works out again for this year or not when we discuss budget. I'm just glad it worked well. Yeah, that's, that's all I cared about because, I mean, we, we said that we could sign on for a year as a trizy, mm -hmm. but that if we weren't satisfied, then maybe we had to look back at, you know, reverting yeah. back to our original, but I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. so pleased. And they did a good job. I think the, the only thing that we didn't uh, anticipate at the time was uh, that the night shift individual moved around the, the banks in Eganville. 
like when there wasn't snow plowing to be done. So that work was getting done. And then, it, of course, that's not something that was in the province's contract with us. They were just plowing. Mm -hmm. So that became an add-on. Uh, so that was just a lesson learned. Maybe we should go back to uh, Minister Mulroney and ask for that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the RADITS request, it's under correspondence. So you'll see that it was re reviewed uh, with Anne McVeigh, Jason, Dana, myself, and uh, his agents. So we did uh, have a meeting about it. So no, nobody has any concerns about the request to transfer the uh, the forest road that's there. And also we're going to close a portion of the unopened road lines because the, the forest road already goes this way. So we're not going to uh, build two roads off each other in that area. So transferring that part to the Raditz. And then the one part that they're not sure about is uh, part six. So it's been surveyed and originally they were thinking of doing a crossing agreement there on that on open road allowance because there's the severances that are there have a right of way that comes through there and crosses our road allowance. Uh, but they haven't decided whether that they're still going to proceed with that or whether they're going to request to close that portion of the road allowance or uh, even if they're going to so that one portion still is outstanding and not really yeah. part of this request at this time, but it's going to, if, if these requests are approved in principle, then it will allow them to move forward with that and, and make that last decision mm -hmm. and it'll have to come back to council. I don't know if there's any- I'm glad there were no on. concerns about that because, I mean, realistically, when we looked at the maps, that made a whole lot of mm -hmm. sense, right? Yeah, so and the county thought, reported that on there too. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it really has to do with the severance, but it, we're we're- it's definitely up to us whether we want to close that portion and accept that portion. But I and once again, I think um, you know, having the county planner here, mm -hmm. it's made such a difference not only for our residents but for our staff as well. So that they they don't have to go anywhere. They're not driving half an hour to Pembroke. Anne is here. You know, I, I, it's just an excellent partnership. And planning is just easier to do face to face when yeah. you have the documents and the maps in front of you, and you're looking at the same thing. You try to do it even over the phone or over email, and I'm like, what, what are you looking at? This yeah. is what I'm looking at. So it has been very beneficial. So I don't know if there's any concerns there, or if we can have staff direction to go ahead and, and move that forward. It will come back to to council when it's done. No, it's good. I have no concerns. Um. Oh yes, and then just uh, a reminder, I know we're gonna discuss this more on Monday when we talk about budget, but wanting to update council on the townships participating in a lot of different collaborations and plans. So some of these were in the work prior to the election. So we are working with county on a master transportation plan, uh, the flood mapping because of the floods that we had in 2017 and 2019, we had uh, the map, all the mapping done with the uh, the province coming over and doing all the photography. So it's kind of a one time, oh my gosh, we have all of this data, how can we use it? So the county uh, is going to put that forward. Now these are paid over two years and our portion is small compared to the county and some of the, the larger municipalities. Um, also the community uh, safety and well-being plan. So still working on implementation of that. Uh, they, they were very kind to let us join the group at a later date. So uh, we're happy to be a part of that group and uh, getting the side eye, but that's okay. This is a this has been a burr in my bonnet for two years. Yeah. So the next part is the new regulation requirements for stormwater. So we're working with Andrew Pauly, who really works with uh, water and sewer, but he has a lot of background there with the Ministry of Environment. So we sort of pulled him into public works department. And he's working with Jason because now we have these regulations and we have to register uh, different assets that we have. So, so we are looking for that strategic plan update. I think we have applied for some funding, We're hoping we get some funding. Uh, if we don't get any funding to do the strategic plan, I do have uh, a quote that is extremely reasonable, uh, which again, will go over with budget from Queen's University. So if nothing else, we can, we can update it and, and do a review of that because it is 2007. A lot of relevant information in there still, but just needs, uh, needs, needs to be updated. I was just going to say the same thing. It's amazing that that document is as old as it is, but it is, is still relevant. No, it is. It is. I mean, not everything, but, but quite a few things are, are very relevant. And I'm wondering if we don't get um, the funding mm -hmm. and we find in the budget that even the reasonable 
full price you got, mm -hmm. would council be, um, like we all have different talents, would council be amenable to maybe sitting down and seeing if we could come up with our own um, using the 07 document mm -hmm. as, a, as sort of a platform? And I think that's what Queens would just be a facilitator in that. That's yeah, what they just were working with the county on theirs, so they're used to that. So it was, it's kind of a condensed. It's like here's the package that Queens offers, but here's a little condensed one day yeah. workshop review, facilitate, and then, and then do a report, and then we prepare the plan. So I, yeah, yeah, it might work, but or we can facilitate it ourselves too. I, I'm just putting it out there. I, well, it I, makes to me it it makes sense like. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, the, like yeah, I always looked at it's like anything. It's like you need consultation on consultation or people <laughs> do things. But in all honesty, we like we got voted in to make decisions and we have no problem like working ourselves through a document that we've been relying on since 2007, anyways. Yeah. Well, so, and like, the thing is, is like the additions really, if you look at most of our documents when you get updated ones, they change. So they don't change real drastically mm -hmm. a lot of the time. But, like and if it was our very, very, very first one, if Bonashir Valley had never done a strap mm -hmm. plan, I would say absolutely we have to have somebody in. But having one again as a platform, I think that we we could probably do it ourselves. And it's, I mean, at the county level, we did it with all 17 county councilors, all of our senior leadership team, all I mean. That, that's a lot of people. So obviously you have to have a facilitator. But I think with five of us and our SLT, I, I think we could attempt it. Give it a try. Yeah. No. And I agree with you. We Brent. know what's adequate. We were elected. We pertains. know our area. And we know what pertains and what doesn't pertain. Yeah. Yeah. See, like this is outdated. <clears throat> Community safety and well-being plan. <laughs> So our last strategic plan, did you say it was 2007? Yes. Okay. And uh, and is, is it on available? It is, it is on the website. Is. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be amazed, John. Honestly, when you read it, even I read it maybe two years. I read it just before the pandemic. So that would have been three years ago. And even reading it then, I was surprised that some of the stuff was still sort of in motion. It, 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 it's an older format. Yes. So it's not easy on the eyes. No. But the information in it is very relevant. Yeah. Okay. No, it, it's not very readable. So for note. I know yeah. how I think when no, it comes to creating plans. <laughs> yeah. Tracy, don't read it. We'll, we'll just have it printed in, in some other format but for you. When you read it, it's the information. Yeah. Maybe I'll take a first stab at putting it into, you know, a nice document. <laughs> um, and the, the Lake Clear study and planning report. So they are still working on that. Mm -hmm. So they did do a lot of progress on it last year. But okay. I mean, of course, the science comes first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now we're getting into the reporting and that. So that is still uh, in the works for this year. And we'll be coming forward. And I uh, want some decisions to make on that. And the, uh, the bylaw enforcement. So... That's probably the biggest part of my report. So obviously, Daryl being appointed our fire chief and CBO, it would be too much to ask somebody to take on all three roles. <laughs> and so we reviewed different options. And based on past records, the past records, we estimated that we need enforcement between five and eight hours a week. It's not always consistent. So you know what might be two hours a week this week might be eight hours a week next week. Um, it, it does vary depending on like parking is very busy. So those might be a busier time. Um, you know, some property standards will come up in the spring, that will be a busier time, but then there's other times where it's not so, so busy. So we looked at our numbers and to employ uh, a part-time bylaw enforcement officer for approximately five hours a week. So we tried to get somebody on an on-call basis, which is difficult because you have to have someone who's always available, but at the same point in time, we're not guaranteeing you any hours. So the costs uh, based on our wage grid, so the wage costs were there of $7,630 based on $5, five hours a week. Cell phone costs, because the person's going to want, uh, we usually pay $30 a month for cell phone costs. And mileage or township vehicle costs, depending on what they have. I estimated that at $2,400, um, you know, that's a very conservative estimate, depending on because the township is large, the mileage could be a lot more. 
Um, and if it's a township vehicle, of course, repairs and fuel and stuff is expensive. So, um, but I tried to be conservative. And so that came up with a cost of about $10,390. So we got a quote, as Daryl said, we met with uh, the municipal law enforcement services. So they currently provide uh, 11 municipalities with uh, trained staff, equipment, vehicles, and years of experiences. So they definitely know what they're doing. And we reached a proposal, which you have attached to my report, and the cost for them to be five hours, to be guaranteed five hours a week. Now, if they go over that, that's okay, because there's going to be other weeks they're going to go under it. And if we find, uh, we're going to sort of give it a three-month period if, if council and committee agrees. And what we would do is after that three-month period, if it seems to be this is not enough, we'll have a discussion at that time. We'll, we will have uh, quarterly, very detailed reports, and we can look at it that, at that point. And if it's the other way, and sorry, I feel like I'm going to sneeze, but... Pardon me. Uh, There's the next reading. I think it's okay. It just was like dust or something. Sawdust. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that smell. That if, was great. If it's under that, and they just don't ever seem to be using the hours, like they said, look, we're not in. We're not in this to just kind of, you know, take you for a ride. He said, if we're not using the hours, then we're not using the hours. We'll have to renegotiate. So, but it seemed like a good starting place five so we took the low end because like i said we need between five and eight so we start we're starting at the low end uh and uh we'll see how that goes so that cost was uh nine thousand and a hundred dollars so it is a um a, a less expensive option it's not a massive savings but as i said my estimates were um very conservative so there could be more savings there i think really what i'm looking at is uh, level of service I'm looking at a team of, um, you know, four or five, six people instead of, instead of one person who yeah. may or may not be available. I'm looking at people who supply all of their own equipment. They have their own liability. They have their own insurance there. You know, they've got uh, um, the all, training. all of the training and all of the equipment that they need, the years of experience. So, you know, they've got body cameras that they need if they've got. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. um, and they are willing to also provide uh, animal, because we don't have that many uh, animal control. They do have trait. Um, I think two uh, of the people yeah. are trained in animal control, and one of them is actually called the dog whisperer because they have had That's some awesome. quite um, aggressive dogs that that individual seems to be able to just talk to mm -hmm. them and they calm right down. So uh, they they seem to have the experience and the training and the equipment that we require. So they're so, on call, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. not, they're not just nine to five. So if there's a dog okay. found at midnight somewhere hit by a car, you can call this. Yes, they'll be called and they'll take care of it. There's a phone number that- So I was, I was actually gonna weigh in. Mm -hmm. So um, Annette uh, spoke to me all the way to my finance and admin committee meeting at the, at the county yesterday <laughs> because um, I didn't want to bother her last week. She was on holidays, so I wanted to talk about this report. And we agree, this is not apples to apples. So I'm yeah. going to weigh into what you just said, Tracy. Yeah. Number one, this is on call Monday to Saturday. Obviously, not Saturday. Monday to Saturday. Well, right. like I, I think it the, the, the depends on the, like, obviously, you can call. Yeah. But it's not an emergency, right? Like, they're not an emergency service. So you're going to call them for property standards or, you know, uh, if you call them to come and pick up a dog. You know, That's you're not going to chase yeah. the dog. Make sure yeah. that you have the dog, you know, in a yeah. shed or tied up, and they'll yeah. they'll be there. Uh, maybe not in 20 minutes, but yeah. they'll be there. If it's an emergency, like you said, yeah. uh, quite often it would be the OPP that would, once okay. the OPP knows that's who we have, yeah. it would be, okay. the, if it's that kind of emergency, it would be the OPP that would contact them. Sure. And of course, they're taking it to a vet. You know, at yeah. the end of the day, and then the vet will make the decision as to what that dog I just is. think people listening would probably want to know and they're being reported, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But so, Again, Annette was very conservative with her numbers, um, but the service level is not apples to apples. Um, it's apples to elephants. When you're thinking about, you know, we've always said our bylaw officer does not work 24 seven, right? At six o'clock or at five o'clock, that phone goes off and you might not get a phone call back until the following morning. Um, you know, we can only put so much on our staff. Uh, how are you? Hiring somebody, if, if we decided to employ a part-time bylaw officer, am I going to really accept five hours per week at whatever wage to be on call all the time, just sitting around waiting for a bylaw call? 
So in, I don't know if everybody read um, the MLES um, proposal or their contract, but they have a lot of really skilled employees. And as Annette said, they have body cams, everybody's trained. They are a, an actual bylaw company. And I think that there's a lot of merit in that, that we're not seeing just in the financials. So I, I think that there, there's, um, what did I say yesterday too? I'm so tired this afternoon. <laughs> um, there's, there's an inherent um, intangible that we're that we're not getting right that that isn't shown in the monies. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, number one, I don't think we could hire somebody uh, for five hours a week. Um, I wouldn't do it personally. Um, and secondly, uh, I think that yes, you're right in that your your um, mileage, your township vehicle is is low. Mm -hmm. comparatively but um i think that you were right to be conservative and give us you know even if it's a thousand dollars it's a thousand dollars you're hiring a skill set you know you could hire someone for five hours a week that's not a problem but they're not going to have can. the skill set and experience that this company has like would you not, yeah, no, yeah. no no but I, yeah no i know what you're saying yeah, yeah. But like, I and it. whoever we hire potentially would have to be trained that's what i'm saying like yeah. you already have it's you know but i give up my vacation for five dollars a week no no, no. If I wanted to go, I'd go. And that's the other thing that we talked about. If somebody's on vacation or sick, yeah. it doesn't matter because there are other employees. It's a real company. Personally, I think it's the way to go. I read the proposal or I read the uh, contract. I think it's, you know, I think for the three month trial period, I think it's absolutely worth, worthwhile. Um, no, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. Proposal. It makes the most sense. Yeah. Like the thing is, it's one less, uh, in my opinion, it's one less staff member to oversee and train beyond the call. As you said, like when someone goes on vacation, then mm -hmm. that's that's where it also implicates. Um, then on top of that, it's your maintenance of the vehicle, like uh, and even paying mileage or anything, someone else's vehicle is going to break down on the way of thing, and we only pay them five hours a week. Mm -hmm. Like, is that really going to compensate for like a two thousand dollar repair? In my opinion, probably not. So uh, no, I'm fine with moving forward with it. I saw the resolution tonight. I read the agreement. Yeah. And I and they've been operating at it. it's not other townships that they're within. Like yeah. they they've been around for a bit. I remember, oh yeah. I remember getting a parking ticket for Mr. McBain when I lived in our car. <laughs> they've been around. Was it doing your parking ticket or your tickets? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but no, well that no, but that's what I'm saying. They're they're a bit they're efficient service and they've been around for a bit. So a three month trial makes sense. Yeah. So. The other thing is with with parking and all that. There's you know there's there are things to do with the courts as well, and it takes yes. us out of yes. that realm. Mm -hmm. So we're not having to file. Uh, things with the provincial offenses court we don't have to you know potentially go to court we don't like there's there's so many other things outside of the money well it focuses around our attention on other things which i think i is agree important it's a valuable skill set is what we're purchasing for less money in my opinion yep it is less money in the end you don't have all of the employee benefits and all of the costs you know with staff too yeah I mean, for a part time for five hours per week, or, but but still, there's there's always an inherent cost mm -hmm. to an employee. Yeah. So we're we're good. Let's go. Okay, ahead. good. So that resolution stands for this evening. Thank you for that, Matt. Okay, thank that was you. great work. Uh, great find. I'm really I'm excited to see how it'll work. And then I just have uh, just Dana's report, uh, which is pretty quick with the uh, zoning and planning. So we know we have the two meetings tonight, and uh, I already talked about the Delcam session and uh, and the fact that uh, county planners are coming back again on Tuesday on uh, April twelfth. Well, I guess that's a Wednesday. So I don't know if she's coming the twelfth or the eleventh. Usually she's here on a Tuesday, but it says April twelfth, so I'm going to say she's coming on a Wednesday the next time. Um, and that was really that was really all we had uh, going forward. Right. We talk lots about uh, March Madness and uh, all that stuff. And yeah. Um, yeah. And then the two meetings this evening. So the minor variance and the uh, planning meeting. And that's, that's all that I have. Okay. Excellent. Sandra, your finances still alive? 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you guys got copies of the balance sheet and the income statement. Yep. Um, there's not much to report on at this time, obviously, mm -hmm. and budget's not done yet, but that'll start next week. Just a few highlights, just a few from the income statement. Um, as you'll see, I touched on last time again, but penalty and interest revenue is down a bit because taxes received are down. Uh, we received our first payment of the year from the Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, $98,000 there. Um, interest at the bank is up significantly compared to the same period of last year. $5,700 is up, so that's great. And OPP monthly costs are fairly consistent as well. And also, so my other report, the tangible capital asset threshold policy. I would like that updated. We passed that, council passed that back in 2008. Most of the thresholds are set between 5,000 and 10,000. Everything has gone up. It's hoping that we could bump that up to 15,000 going forward. And I've already spoke to the auditors and they are okay with that. Okay, so the, you want you want for all TCAs for them to go up 5,000? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we're already at 10. Yeah, no, I, I and, get yeah. no. So it's, I think 15. Yeah. My counterparts seem to be, they're starting to discuss it as well. I was just going to ask where, like, again, apples to apples, other municipal, other municipalities around our size, where are they sitting for TCA? I think mean, they're all at five to 10. And are they? They're okay. all looking at 15. Okay. Like, so, even our software people, when we were setting up our assets this year, yeah. the software guy's like, oh, you're you're still really low. So that's where okay. I thought. Yeah. And we know through PSAB, it's not going to get any better. So... Yeah, okay. So it is a budget item, but I think that's great, Sandra. Thanks for letting us know. Just like we'll still have the stuff, we just don't have to look after it as in depth and book wise. Right. 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 Yeah. No, I think, yeah, it's a very good recommendation. I wouldn't have thought of that. And then, yeah, it'll help out with, like you said, with the piece of reporting going forward. Exactly. So that's when Sandra was at the pack with the and they, they, they were quite, they were talking about it. Okay. I had this done first, though. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, she did. I like how you roll, Sandra Barr. That's great. But I would like direction uh, for the council if I can bring the policy back to the next council meeting when we pass by resolution. We wouldn't obviously input any of it for 2022's financials. No, no, no. Would say, but we would input it for 2023's yeah. uh, financials. So you would see some of the capital assets would be taken off and they would go uh, go down. But And we wouldn't capitalize some of the stuff that normally we would. But I think that makes sense. No, we can do it at the beginning of the year. That's right. Yeah, yeah. no, I start a new and start a new year. No, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. And we won't have to report on those assets, right? Right. It is low. Yeah. Are we going to discuss the the balance sheet and the other information at a later place, a different place in time? Uh, or is yeah. it good for did, questions now? Did you have any questions? I do. Hopefully I can answer them. Yes. So one was just off the cuff. There was a, a, a listing for household hazardous waste under waste management. And it was, and all the figures were zero. I just wasn't sure it was that because we didn't have a program for household housing space. So we're talking about the income statement. Okay. I'm sorry that one that page I didn't print out, and I'm sorry. Oh. So it's not important right now, but that could be because that reflected to the year, the it, year today. It's only it's open from May to October. Got it. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, second good question, though. On uh, I'll try to make them all good questions. On page four on the balance sheet. Uh, most of the figures in 22, 23 columns are very similar, which makes our, our job hopefully easier. But on that one where it says due to other boards, we go up from $308 to $512,000. Why, why, why do we owe money to other boards? So it's on page four under general fund. It's the county, the due to county. Yeah. So that's money that we owe to Right to Renfrew County as our contribution to them? Well, as our, our taxpayers' contribution. <laughs> okay. I just wonder why. And the reason it's $308 for 22 is because that's what's left for this year. Right. 
the carrots for the half year. Better. Yeah. Okay. And the other question under the page three, the page before, under Parks and Rec, this is the other discrepancy. It's five hundred forty-seven thousand for last year, seven hundred ninety-one thousand dollars projected for next year. Is there a difference there, or again, am I missing something? I would. So have... those are capital. That's those are the capital asset accounts. Okay. It's probably got to do if you look at the very top line, the the yep. work that was done at the curling club. Right. Is is still in okay. progress. So, so we, that's yeah. Those are uh, that's the reason that yes. the fingers five. Okay. So those fine. numbers growing is a good thing. Yeah. That means we're putting into our capital assets. Good. So uh, and good. one of the things, and you'll find this uh, when when Sandra gives us financials, whether it's monthly or um, quarterly. One of the things that you'll find is that sometimes numbers won't look mm -hmm. quite right. Um, there's always a timing difference for when we pay county or mm -hmm. if we get a grant, when does that grant flip over the work in progress yeah. where it's in, a, you know, sort of operational and then goes to capital. So your questions are valid because you're going to see as we move forward, sometimes the numbers just don't look the same month over month or year over year at the same time of year. Yeah, well, it's just I'm trying to do my job. And uh, and uh, but if you'd like, should I is it more appropriate for me to go to Sandra and ask these questions? It's not, it's not inappropriate to ask them here. No, I think you should ask them in open forum. I think that it's good for all of us to know where we are. And, and if you, you know, Merv has flagged things in, in previous years that you know, and asking questions about financials is very important. Good. Yeah, I think and we'll. we'll learn. So Sorry, I was going to say, I think we'll learn more when we go through our budgeting process. Okay. Oh, yes, you yeah, will. Monday. <laughs> I will just make one comment to that, and that is that uh, sometimes it's nice, no, sometimes, always, it's nice for staff to have the questions ahead of time. If you know them ahead of time, and you can give them to ahead of, us to us ahead of time, then by all means, absolutely ask them in open session. But sometimes if your question, you know, we've got the paper in front of us, and we're like, oh, yeah, I know that answer, but I got to look somewhere else to find it. It's easier for us if we we anticipate your question and then Fair. we can give you a fulsome answer. Um, if you think that you think of it just while you're while you're here, or you just thought of it this morning, that's fine. Uh, most of them we can usually answer off the cuff, but on occasion, it's it's like oh, I know that answer, but I I but, have to look it up. But there's also yeah. no issue with staff saying. I will find that yes, out and get absolutely. back to you. As, and then we'll right? get all. We're not questions. asking gotcha questions. Yeah. You're asking sincerely. Absolutely. I didn't. I didn't know what this was. And if Sandra has to say, you know what, Councillor Epps, leave it with me. I'll get you an answer by the yeah. end of the day. Is what Annette tells me frequently when I ask her things. There, there you go. Because <laughs> she doesn't want to make a mistake, which I really yeah. did. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I think so. She's not paying attention anymore. Yeah, well, <laughs> if I don't look at them, they won't see me. <laughs> I guess I guess we'll just move on to correspondence. Anybody have any questions about correspondence? Hey? Um, the um, Ministry of the Envir Environment, Conservation, and Parks. Um, we will definitely want to keep our eye on this going forward. At this time, I'm not going to to raise any red flags. Uh, this was something that we spoke about at our Roma meeting on the days just blend together on Friday. Um, so just something that was brought forward to the board for us to keep our eye on. I read the county council summaries and <laughs> I saw the volume. My God. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, you just got the summary. <laughs> it was uh, about a 400 page yes. package. And yeah. And of course, then now we're all doing everybody that sits on a, an external board, and we have all of them now. We have the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, um, Rural Ontario Municipal Association, um, uh, Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Eastern Ontario Regional Network, and our Ontario Winter Games. So that was an additional reading of about three hours. There was a lot of information this month for some reason, or last month for some reason. Great. Any other question? What about correspondence fee? Anyone have any questions on correspondence fee or comments? Well, we should discuss uh, the correspondence from the one letter received about the beaver tail. Yes. Yeah. Number three. Yeah. 
Okay. Is this person live beside where the truck is parked? I'm not familiar no. with this. Okay. No, across the street. Okay. On the diagonal. Yeah. Yeah. Kitty, kitty corner. Yeah, but yeah. 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 So I can speak really. My can, my uh, response is beaver tails is only there till 5 p.m., correct? Typically when we have them. And not using the generator anymore. No. So there's not a noise. That's, no, there isn't a noise issue per se. It's the traffic, it's the congestion. But it is a provincial highway. Yeah. No, I I, I totally understand. I I'm for beaver tails being there. So no, I, I I'm good with uh, having beaver tails there. No different. We're gonna have the whiskers there, and yeah. no different than we do uh, music in the park. We've done other events. We mm -hmm. promote our parks or uh, tourism, and it's a tourism booth. We keep statistics on how many people actually come to the tourism yeah. booth. Um, and at the end of the day. Uh, I think it's a benefit to have donations to our local charities and the way we're doing it. Businesses, uh, right? And the thing that. is, is I think it's great when we get other, and we've had other uh, organizations approach us previously that haven't decided to go to the tourist booth. Mm -hmm. um, and there is other locations. Um, and people are no different than Viewer Tills was up at the Shell Station the one time. They do go, oh, and that's just one organization of many. Yeah. Like, Alley and Whiskers is another, whiskers but, and uh, or whiskey, where is it? <laughs> no, whiskers and, whiskers alley and Alley Cats. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, but no, I'm, uh, I'm fine with continuing there. I'm not going to limit it. And we're just going to approach each one as they come up. Um, and we, uh, I'm good with it. They, 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 nope. they attract a lot of people, which is what we want mm -hmm. in our community to support our other businesses. Rio is right there. Granary is right there. You know, all of the quick service restaurants, they're all benefiting. From well, this. when we and we said no one else sells beaver tails in town, it's like I have friends that live in Toronto, they drive specifically through Eganville mm -hmm. to get the cinnamon buns. It is our, our it, Chelsea buns. It's our claim to fame, beaver tails. It originates from Killaloo. Of all places yeah. we need to have beaver tails, it's this area. <clears throat> but I also think um that it it whether it's Bonashir Street or not, it's still a provincial highway. We do have transport trucks mm -hmm. and uh a lot of traffic in the summertime, especially. And I think that I'm not exactly sure where in the village you would put it where there aren't, where it isn't residential. Yeah. And trust me, I went through every location I could think of. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where it goes. And I think having it at the tourist booth, especially with the upgrade to the electrical, which means that the generator does not have to run, I think is, is, it's the place for it. Yeah. I, I think we had it at uh, at the tourist booth this time. It was aligned with the building, whereas it's not affecting, you know, it, usually it's on the other side next to someone's house, right? So where it is at the tourist booth, I think is perfect location. But even the residents of that house that you're speaking of, concern? they didn't, I, okay. she's actually a friend of mine and I asked her, did it bother you? And mm -hmm. she said, no. And they have their grandchildren, and the grandchildren love be So, I, yeah. I don't know any children who don't like beaver tails. I, in this I don't know any Brent that doesn't like beaver tails. No, you know what? Yeah, like, well, we you know, purchased four, and I only have two kids. So, like, yeah. <laughs> and they each only got a half. So, uh, but no, I, but no, I'd say, honestly, it's just, uh, it was nice. Uh, so, when we were waiting for, and that was so we went to beaver tails, we've ever, I went to other things. We love the park at Centennial. Like, we just, we want, people to go there and it is off of a highway people drive through email or drive through town we always have to and we want people to stop and the thing is that they stop at an organization say right now it's beer tills say we get some uh say someone wants to put up a vendor and artwork something a stand up something we'll look at we'll review it when it comes up but well, it's centennial parks there for a reason for people to stop enjoy what we offer as a municipality so it makes total sense and we put in we spent the money sorry ratepayer spent the money to put in a service to have that option to have be retails there so you didn't have to listen to a generator and they just donated 271 dollars correct i don't yeah. know how often they do that but but every, they every time that they operate they don't and it's, it's range, benefit and there. it's ranging yeah. 200 dollars to yeah. like 500 like yeah, i remember amazing. so and that all goes back in our community there are other issues there yeah so and so you're you're okay with it mark Yes. Okay, and John. So, reading his complaint letter, he uh, he says he would uh, be satisfied if we limited the number of times the beaver tail truck was there. That's one issue. Uh, and as far as you're saying that there's other neighbors, a similar proximity to the tourist center to this fella, and they uh, and they haven't had a big issue with it. So he's that's no. okay. So we have to answer his letter, obviously. And uh, and uh, it doesn't seem reasonable for us to be constrained 
to four times a year to me because of the benefits to everybody. And I think that if we heard from all the neighbors, especially the ones that live right beside the tourist booth, yeah. if there were um, concerns across the board, I think it's something that, you know, obviously, especially when it was generating, it, it was uh, using the generator. I know the first time it was very noisy. The second time it wasn't, it was quieter. They used a quieter generator. Yeah. Uh, but now that it's plugged in, I'm I'm not sure what the concern is. So so I guess I look I looked at it is that so we promote Centennial Park, we promote yeah. music in the park, and we don't yeah. limit how many people can go to music in the park of concern of the right. volume. We have a parking lot that's there. Even when there's 24, 25 people in line up for the Beaver Tills when I was there, the parking lot wasn't full. Like a lot of people, like if people stop in town, they walk up and it might, it's a benefit to our community. I agree. I'm hoping there's more. I'm hoping that, you know, we can get a chip truck there and other things. I have to tell you, this art project we're working on, there are going to be a key point that artwork is going to be there. And it's also a lookout over the river exactly. to get to Centennial Park. And it's a hook to draw people in to go to, like you mentioned, our other events. And if, the, if um, there are ever EV chargers, that's where they're going. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, I'm. You strategically place the tourist booth there for a reason. Exactly. Well, and they strategically put the Centennial Park where it is, you know. So I think uh, I um I do think that we need to respond, but um I agree with all of my colleagues. I don't think we can limit. I think it ends at five each day. Really, it's not there at night time, so there's not a crowd at night. Right after dark. So. Well, it's in a case. It's a case by case every time. Like it comes yeah. to us, we review it, yeah. see what they're doing. It's no different than today with a proposal mm -hmm. for the Saturday, and we said yes, it's two hours, and mm -hmm. yeah. that's about it. And I think the Beaver Tail Truck has been in other locations in Eganville for different events, hasn't it? Wasn't it at the arena one time? One time it was a pre-pandemic. I okay, don't think it's been. Be that far. I think it's. Perhaps maybe on a Canada day. Well, it's going to say depending on the event that's going on in the conference. Yeah, no. okay. But I think that I know that a lot of stuff was going on at the arena, but placing beaver tails at the tourist booth with Mansell Jameson's yes, horse-drawn wagon. I mean, well, people were waiting for a wagon ride and there were lineups. They were buying beaver tails. So the picnic tables were filled, and that's the last yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's more the reward with is that Town Park was full. You see more kids yeah. playing. Like we'll that's what right. that's what we want. That's yeah. why. Awesome. We're agreed. I Excellent. I will respond to this to see that we don't intend to limit it, but we will we do always notify the neighbors uh before beaver tails come so they're aware. Does he like beaver tails? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody asked. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, no, but to John's point, like I think if there were mass complaints, that's one thing. Yeah. 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 The other thing uh, we need to talk about is the permission for the super jackpot for the Legion, which I'm sure everybody is in agreement that yeah. uh no, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? While we're under correspondence, I'm going to do my new and unfinished, which I believe was 8.9. Is that correct? Sorry, 8.3? Yes. 8.3. Okay, so I received just this morning um, a, an email from Liam Vanderbrock. Um, he is the union president who represents rent. Renfrew's local fire and ambulance 911 dispatchers, also known as ambulance communication officers. Um, they work at the CAC Center in Renfrew. Uh, these incredible men and women provide 24-7, 365 service to the residents and visitors of Renfrew County, South Algonquin Township, and Algonquin Park, and are located right in the town of Renfrew. This year, for uh, the annual mm -hmm. National Public Safety Tele Telecommunicators Week, we are looking to our community partners to see if they would be willing to show their support for our 911 dispatchers in any fashion they see fit. Some cities and townships make proclamations, social media blasts, display appreciation messages on electronic boards, etc. I would be willing to help work on or provide any material you would need to accomplish these goals. So I think that we all appreciate our 911 dispatchers. And I think that with the shortness of time, um, it, 
it's too late, I think, now because our next meeting is during the week. Uh, so we can't really do a proclamation because this is our last meeting. But what we could do are some social media blasts and um, put it on our electronic board. Bye-bye. Yes, yeah. excellent. Okay. And then, um, Annette, I will forward you this email and uh, perhaps you can speak to Liam. And thank you so much for your support, everyone. I think that's lovely. And I apologize. I Time is just of the essence. And that's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Number 10, hydro pole. I want yes. to make you smile. Okay. I came home, I came the, the scenic route today to Heidemann's. And I want to let you know there are several Ontario hydro crews moving poles back on 512. Oh, yeah. I, I spoke, yeah. I didn't know if you seen it or not. If you came from that direction, I, I saw that and I said, Jen will be smiling. Well, I, I knew that because of county. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. all the all the locates are are oh, they're almost done. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're at they're at it. I don't know how far they are, but there's at least two or three crews there at it to say. Great. Good news. It is good news. Great tourist, news. Yes, tourist booth. We beat that to death, or is that someone else won number eleven tourist booth? I think that was the winter. Yeah. Oh. Then just go back to the library board update, Mars, since we're done correspondence. Okay. Library board or is there another? Isn't there one before the library board update? No, just a reminder of the public meeting. Just a reminder of the public meeting. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And so, library, I gave pretty much uh, majority things, but no, that so for the March Madness and stuff was really. Uh, really good uh, turnout uh, there. So it's a really good discussion with our board. So we have a bunch of events coming up and you'll be seeing them and I'll send out an email to everyone, just remind so the township can help uh, share the Facebook posts, everything. Um, but uh, but no, so BAF is all booked up. We all had the library uh, budget meeting as well. Um, so that was uh, good, pretty straightforward. And we'll be talking about that later. Uh, but no, overall, um, the library board's very focused. We reviewed, so we always review our policies. Um, we have a very good working board. Um, so uh, we're really focused on, uh, so obviously we don't want burnout staff uh, through our events and programming, obviously it's like anything. Uh, so, but we have a very strong working board and uh, really focused on uh, raising funds, raising money, uh, so we can put that back to uh, the community. Um, really, we have the grant for the technology uh, that we got la last year, earlier this year. Uh, so then we're really highlighting every time we do make a purchase with that, we're going to be highlighting it just to show uh, all our residents in both North Ogona and Bonsher Valley, uh, just on what we're what we're getting, what's available to the public, and really making that uh, known. Uh, and then we're also going towards a next March break. Uh, we're really going to work with some partners to really just highlight some more things, even more. Um, but besides that, uh, everything's functioning very good. Uh, and I'll send out some formal dates of some of the events that are coming out. Um, then they all we're trying to align everything. So we have the auction that'll be coming up uh, in April, and uh, and then just several other ones. So I'll send out a formal email just with it. Uh, and we'll, that's about it. Library board, uh, everything's all good. Straight Remember forward. the last meeting? They were that was amazing. The presentation that they gave and uh, the amount they've raised in fundraising initiatives. And you really Pretty do impressive. have amazing staff and an amazing board. And that budget was very well done. Yeah, no, it's no, it's really good. And um, so, like, in the, it's kind of encouraging. So, like, one of the things that also we looked at was that there is any surplus uh, of funds. Like, so, like, we went uh, over and. A, beyond what our fundraising goals were last year, which is fantastic. That amount of money will go into, uh, so things that will help benefit the residents. Uh, so it's not gonna go into like infrastructure or anything yeah. like that. It goes directly Perfect, into yeah. what the, like supporting staff or programming, supporting uh, things that'll make the library more efficient for repairs. But I know like the technology that's gonna be coming to our, our library is gonna be very, very exciting and it makes everything better. And that's yeah. and that's the whole point. It's a very good working staff. And uh, to Jen for the last meeting, they are working towards a Memorial Garden as well. Um, oh, good. So they, are, so they are working towards that. So Susan was going to speak with uh, Catch a Star that's beside there. So yeah. that was on her agenda this week to accomplish. Okay, that's uh, right. And then they know to get in touch with you as well. Perfect. Thank so you, Brent. Just to follow up on that for, from the last meeting. Maybe that. Oh. Mike, a little note they put in with the 
property taxes if you wish to donate to the land. I saw that. I thought that was kind of nice. Yeah, and that yeah. and that also goes in North Algonas as well. Right. Um, so it's kind of something that, that it's yeah. kind of something that the board established. Uh, is just kind of it's like anything. If you don't actually promote uh, your organization, you kind of get forgotten about, unfortunately. If you don't um, ask, you won't get. Yeah. So, so the thing is, it's like, and you have, and you, well, and you, have a phenomenal, and you have a phenomenal staff there that really does. They're focused on promoting it. They got a new website up and running. It's a lot easier to use their website than the previous one. Uh, so that's every that's a everything you want, right? <laughs> Tracy and I are giving each other knowing glances. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, that's uh, that's fantastic, Brent. I think uh, you know it's so nice to see it being used. The one question I had because. Yeah. It came up over and over again this winter when they when you know you saw all over the news about um, warming centers. Mm -hmm. um, is the library available to be a cooling center? And is there any way, much like the donation, which I thought was brilliant going out of the tax bill because everybody opens their tax bill, and it was a good one too because it was the one with your your thing for snow drifters, right? So. You know, it it really worked well. Mm -hmm. um, but is there any way to get the word out that if, you know, if it's a terribly hot summer, um, can it also be used as a cooling center? Well, it's, I think that's something that we can reach out. We can reach out to them. The thing is, is we uh, we promote it mm -hmm. as the heating center when it is during operating hours. It's not. Yes. When, it's not when they're closed. And but it's during operating. But like the thing is, is uh, the library is open to the public. So in my in my opinion. It would just be a simple that uh, promotion through the through the library. You would say, "Hey, this is an option." It's getting and the, these are the hours of operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because it, and I think that was also because of the the website. I think there were there were some um, questions about when the library was open. I guess somebody saw that it was supposed to be open and phoned, and there was no answer. And I'm thinking, well, if there's no answer, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're closed, but well, and they do. Getting, um, yeah, and it's a, it's like, it's no different than something that, uh, like, the board really values is that you always want to have your your hours open to uh, the conditions of your municipalities. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that's something that they're also that we're heavily monitoring this year as well to see. Okay, uh, like for example, it's like if you realize heavier in the summertime. Uh, and you're utilized a little less in the winter, then, okay, what happens when you kind of have a little bit of flex flexibility within right. your schedule, but the hours stay the same? Like, so your your paid hours is all the same. You're, so it'd be, you're just heavier load during the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that you always have to track to make sure they're open for the best benefit for the residents. Agreed. Um, so that's just something that, uh, we'll, that we'll be discussing next year. You have to have data. That's great. To review it. Thanks for that, friend. Yep. And I did get the donation thing, but I just sponsored the Authors Festival. So I figured I was good. Well, the next date has, meeting date has been established. April 11th? Yep. And we have budget next Monday, correct? Yes. Monday, okay. yes. And it's at 10 a.m.? Yes. Perfect. Uh, come comfortable, ready to work. I want to get it, or I, I would like to get it done in one day. We've never had a two-day budget meeting, but... Um, I, I also want to leave enough room for thoughtful questions and concerns. Uh, I believe we'll have our budget packages on Thursday. Thursday. Thank you. I didn't want to overpromise, um, which should give you lots of time to go over it. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Um, yes. So Monday, uh, March 27th, 10 a.m. Yeah. I think I've got it on my calendar. It's a beautiful day to govern. Can I add one more thing as we're talking about community stuff for the so one of the things we did in my, uh, March Break Madness was the night museum that I talked about. So I would like to propose going forward, we not right now, but we come up with ideas to offer that frequently to families. Mm -hmm. Because if you know that you must, you know, having children, the cost to go to a movie, I know for me, a family of five, it's about a hundred dollars to take kids to a movie. Yes. Ridiculous. So if we could, you know, figure out a way to offer this in the community, it's a real cost savings and people have an opportunity to take out their family and enjoy a movie night. But I also think there's infrastructure at the Eagles. Yes, nest, definitely. Right? There's a projector, there's a screen, there are chairs. It's it's there. Yeah. All as you gotta a, do is sell popcorn. As, a, <laughs> as opposed to having to set up and set up a screen and set up the projector. And I, I think, and you could 
pack a lot more people into the Eagles. Definitely. Nest. And um, there's an organization in local RV Ventures. That's their remote control vehicles. Um, I think kids might have been there. Look at this. So it's, they have tracks or races in the bush where they you remote, remote controlled via toys, trucks for kids. I can get all the details, but they're, they've got uh, families. So they have about six events coming up and they're donating half the proceeds to their Boncha Valley Youth Action Committee. So those proceeds well, I would like to use for movie nights, but we can talk more and yeah. Yeah. in kind donation, maybe from the township where they rank or Eagle's Nest. Well, but I think if this is something that we're putting on, I mean, even mm -hmm. though, it, so you can't charge people for the movie, but yeah, yeah, you can't charge yeah. people anyway. But if we're rolling BVAC and DEACDG, then there's a natural yeah. connection there. Um, sorry, I think I just sprung that on council. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That was for my EACDG meeting at yeah. the beginning of April. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that um, yeah, we can't charge. So this would be this would be brilliant. Yeah. And if it's something, I mean, we always say if it's something that we're doing internally, then why are we charging ourselves for the space? Exactly. And this, you know, you can buy the movie, someone could buy it, the new release. So the people are seeing something new that's come out rather than you know older movies like Metal yeah. Museum. It's twenty five dollars. It's nothing in the grand scheme, right? Yeah, great idea. The buildings there. I know, I know. And knowing that it, that the museum one was popular, um, I I think, and probably if if people knew they were at the Eagle's Nest, they'd be very popular. We more space. But we could then. still call it a museum event. No, no, it's a township, it's a township event. event. Yeah, a township event. Which uh, what fits better? Yeah. Plus the museum was nice because it's really intimate, and but hoping we're going to do more artist markets or you know things like that. that you space. take a, a note from the uh, library. They're selling homemade cookies donated two for a yeah. dollar, and they wouldn't end up on the floor like the popcorn. You could have <laughs> auto valley <laughs> food co-op people come in to serve their food. Like that again, it's yeah. a whole collaborative initiative, right? Did you see the photos of the popcorn? <laughs> Look, I was just floor with the blizzard. It was, it shout was, out to my son Alex who helped and Michelle and, and her husband yeah. and Stuart and Stuart Tiefman, oh my gosh. and Kayla we all stayed late to clean that place up it is, I think there was more popcorn on the floor well, than there was in kids mouths Michelle's husband uh, Ch Paul shout out to him he wore the dinosaur costume oh yes so every time he would go and try and scare the kids or touch them whatever he'd swoop the popcorn on the floor <laughs> so anyway it's, it was all able to be cleaned up. No harm, no foul. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, see the volunteers. We can work on a movie night yeah. and a schedule. Yeah, we'll work really, with Dana. I really generally comes case by case. So. Yeah. yeah. We'll work with Dana. And well, it's things. kind of like public skating. Yeah. But it's movie night. And maybe we take you to the park in the summer, right? Um, would Jones would like to take a break before we get in this closed session? I would. Yep. Perfect.
Okay. Uh, let's we call the closed session meeting to order. Oh, no, we nope. You have to go into a close. That's this one. You made a resolution. Yeah. yeah. The resolution? Going, yeah. The, That's your it's resolution. The closed under 239 yeah. of the municipal act. Yes. Is that the one? Okay. Yes, sir. And a position, plan, procedure, criteria, instructions to be applied to any negotiations carried out or to be carried on by any or behalf of the municipality or local board. I need a mover to move into closed session. Yep. Brent? And chair, sign, carried. All in favor? Carried.
resolution. The committee moves out of closed session to rise and report the committee met to receive information and give staff direction regarding the boat launch at Apianga Mountain Resort. A discussion on the agreement with North Oklahoma Water Source for the Bone Tree Union Public Library and to approve minutes of, from February 7th, 23 meeting. All in favor? No, you need a mover. No, uh, no, Brent gave me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll move it. Yeah. All in favor? Ready, move. Sure. It's like deja vu. Put you to put the sound off when they're moving. Then we need an adjournment. It's you. Motion to adjourn. Yep. I don't have. Oh, oh you don't need one. So okay. Okay. And that's got it. Okay. All those in favor. All in favor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good work today, team. Oh, you're going to try to get us the.